Um, I call Douglas Ross. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And I wanted to hear about the Nairn Bypass, but maybe we will come back to that uh, another day. Because a quarter of a billion pounds of taxpayers' money has been spent and not a single ferry built. The crucial document detailing why this awful decision was made has disappeared. But all we hear from Nicola Sturgeon is this is regrettable. Regrettable. First Minister, when you suggested chopping off the bottom of classroom doors, that was regrettable. Wasting a quarter of a billion pounds is much, much worse. <laughs> First Minister, do you understand how angry it makes the public to hear you use weasel words like regrettable, rather than giving them the apology they deserve? First Minister. I know there's a lot of anger in Scotland, right across Scotland right now. I'm not sure it's for the reason uh, Douglas Ross has raised today, and I suspect he's going to feel the full force of that tomorrow. Um, on the issue of uh, ferries, I've made very clear uh, that the delays, the cost overruns are deeply regrettable. And I do believe, I, I believe that when things don't go right in government, it is important that leaders uh, say so. If only uh, other governments followed the same principle, perhaps things might be a bit different. But I will not, uh, and I am afraid uh, I'm not going to be moved from this, I will not uh, apologise for decisions uh, that allowed the last commercial shipbuilder uh, on the Clyde to continue in business, uh, that allows 400 uh, workers to be employed there today, yeah. earning a wage, supporting their families, uh, and I will not apologise for investment in new ferries uh, because the yard uh, the government is focused on ensuring that these ferries are completed um, as part of our overall investment in Scotland's ferry network. So I'll always take responsibility uh, when things don't go right, but I'll continue to act in a way that is in the interest of this country overall. And of course, tomorrow, people have the opportunity to cast their verdict on all of that. Yeah. Dr. Nicola Surgeon says she's taking responsibility. Those are weasel words to the island communities that are still without these vital ferries. And while Nicola Sturgeon won't tell it straight, Jim McCall didn't mince his words on the radio yesterday. He called the First Minister out for lying. He said, and I quote, there was no danger of the yard going under at that time. The man who this SNP government trusted to save the yard, who Nicola Sturgeon stood next to and said this was the man to turn it round, says the jobs at Ferguson Marine were safe, no matter what, because the yard had other strong contracts. Mm -hmm. Her only justification for charging ahead against expert advice has been grandstanding that she saved the jobs. Mm. Now it's emerged she didn't. The jobs were never at risk. First Minister, hasn't your main excuse just been shredded? Perhaps like that vital missing document. First Minister. Well, let me say categorically, I stand by what I said on the radio uh, the other morning, 100%. Uh, uh, Jim McCall's many uh, things, uh, but he's not a disinterested objective uh, observer on these matters. Perhaps something uh, that we should bear in mind. But let's look at uh, the two uh, key issues that I think uh, he was taking issue with. Firstly, uh, he seemed to claim that I said there were 400 people employed in the yard back in 2015. I didn't say that, as uh, the transcript uh, will show. I said that 400 people are currently employed there, earning a wage, supporting their families, who would not be in employment today yeah. had the contract uh, not been awarded. That is just a matter of fact. Um, and secondly, uh, the, the yard uh, would not uh, have been in jeopardy, would not have potentially closed uh, had that contract not been awarded. Now, that wasn't tested, of course, so that can only be a matter of opinion. But I tell you this, if Jim McCall is seriously arguing that he would have continued to invest uh, his money in a yard that had no major contracts, then all I can say, that is not the Jim McCall I know. So people can make up their own minds. What I know is that the decisions uh, this government took have ensured that the shipyard is still open, operating today, focusing, yes, on delivering 
those ferries. And today there are 400 people working in that yard, uh, 400 people earning a wage, supporting their families, as I say. And I think uh, for all that the uh, delays to the ferries, the overruns to the ferries are deeply regrettable. I do not regret the fact that there are 400 people employed in that shipyard today. <laughs> Douglas Ross.